Welcome back to this walkthrough of Final Fantasy VI with me, Jerupidus. In the last episode, we met Cyan, retainer to the recently deceased King of Doma. At the Imperial camp, we failed to stop Kefka from poisoning Doma's water supply, which ended up killing everyone there, including Cyan's wife and child, which is pretty brutal. Cyan understandably then flew into a rage and attacked the camp, and the party managed to escape together. We're still headed for Narsh, so let's get going, but before we do, we are going to fiddle around with our relics just a little little bit. I want to give Sabin the barrier ring to up his magic power. That's going to help him do a little bit more damage with Horrible. We're going to remove this hyper wrist and then just throw on, I don't know, the mithril glove should be fine. And then I want to give Siam the hyper wrist to boost up his vigor. And I think that's all for now. So let's get a move on. We need to head south a little bit, but we can actually access Doma Castle. And I want to go check that out. And once again, every fight we get into is a little bit of a risk that Shadow is going to leave. Uh, once again, we're going to keep him with us, even if it means I have to do everything over. Uh, but I just hope that doesn't happen pretty much. Let's see how much damage this Orbol can eke out now. It just had occurred to me that we weren't, like, being perfectly optimal with our relic setup. Ooh, seven gained a level, that's pretty nice. Um, but it is only a couple magic power, so it's not really that big of a deal. But there's no reason not to be optimal when you can. And here's Doma Castle, but we find that it is off limits. We can't get inside, but it is pretty cool. The way that it feels like the Empire is just kind of closing in all around you, everywhere you try to go back, or every previous place you try to visit, there they are, just taking everything over. They're the bad guys, uh, and they're the worst. <laughs> there goes Interceptor, but the Grasshoppers have flying, so Interceptor can't hit them. Which I guess kind of makes sense, although it seems like he might be able to jump, but either way, it uh, doesn't work out if the enemy has the flying status, which these in particular do. And Dispatch should clean things up here. Okay. Let's just hope Shadow doesn't leave. And keep on going. And I am very excited to start this scenario. This right here is the Phantom Forest. And this is just the coolest. Between the music, the background, and the unique layout where it's a side-scrolling dungeon, with these trees in the foreground, it's just so good. Now in this first area, we're only going to meet one ghost. But as we go a little bit deeper, we're going to start running into larger formations of ghosts, and I really like that too, where it seems to be like getting increasingly haunted. I think that's a great touch. And I am feeling pretty glad right now that I bought 99 Shuriken, so I just don't have to worry about it. And right here we will find a recovery spring that we end up having to use that is not optional, but either way it's nice. And then if we head up this way we'll be able to start seeing in the background our eventual destination. I'm going to leave this in just because it demonstrates what I was talking about a moment ago, where the formations of ghosts are larger, even though it's kind of a redundant battle. If you let them live too long, that fire can chew you up a little bit. Yeah, there we go. It's really not that bad, though. As long as you're just using your skills the way you should be, you're going to be just fine. And there it is. See it in the background there? That train? That's where we're headed. Science says a train's there? But I thought Doma's railway had been destroyed. Sabin says maybe survivors inside. Let's take a look. Sabin says, hey, we can get in right here. Cyan says, Sir Sabin. Sabin says, we can't just wander around out here. We have to go on board. Cyan says, Sir Sabin. Sabin says, don't worry. Sir Sabin. What on earth? Cyan says, let me off. This train's haunted. Ooh. 
and uh-oh, <laughs> it, it's moving. Science says if we don't get off now, but it won't open. Science says we're too late. Seven says, what's with this train? And Science says, this is the Phantom Train. It carries the departed to the other side. Seven says, wait a sec, I don't want to go there. Science says, we all have to go sometime. A little resigned to his fate here, I think. Seven says, I have things to do here. We have to stop this thing. Let's make for the engine. And we will make for the engine, but first we're going to head this way towards the caboose. And we're going to head in this room first. Let's talk to the impresario. He says, I manage this train. What business have you here? And let's ask him about the train. Impresario says, the train ferries the deer departed to the other side. There they can take their eternal rest. So yeah, we are on the Phantom Train headed to the afterlife, it would seem. Well, let's talk to him one more time. How do we stop it? That is a pertinent question indeed. The impresario says, want to stop the train? Just use the controls in the engineer's compartment. And he seems weirdly okay with us just kind of stopping the train. Like, this is probably an important process for people, you know, who have died. But either way, let's check out this book on the table. Cyan says, be these time schedules? Seven says, hmm, they're all blank. And the impresario says, the phantom train guides the departed ones to the spirit world. They have no need of schedules. And it must be nice in a way... <laughs> To have your schedule totally clear. I guess the drawback is that you're dead, but you know what I'm saying. Anyway, uh, there are some invisible treasure boxes. This is the first one. And that's going to have a tent inside it. Now, I do believe that these are just a mistake, just a coding error, but they fit in well enough with the environment that it's not a big deal. Um, but you just have to kind of know they're there. I really think they should probably be visible. But either way, let's check out this switch. Seven says, what's this? Let me just give it a... Science says, Sir Seven, maybe we shouldn't fumble with that. And Seven flips the switch anyway and says, Gave it my best shot. Science says, How can you? How could you? And he puts the switch back. Seven says, Cyan, you're not scared, are you? Science says, How dare you? Just because I respect other beings' property doesn't mean I'm not mechanically minded. But here's the thing. <laughs> Sabin's right. Cyan, you're a total klutz when it comes to machines. Cyan is not mechanically minded at all. Cyan says, silence! How, how could you tell? And he doesn't elaborate on how he could tell, but he is right about that. Cyan does not like machines, but maybe his, uh experience with the Magitek armor, asking how it works when it's literally just a couple levers right by your hands. May have given him a clue before now, but let's talk to this ghost. Seven says, what is it? And Cyan says, it seems to want to come with us. Bring it along, and we are definitely going to do that, but let's go ahead and throw it in the back row. But this is going to be our ghosty friend. He's just going to be with us for the train, but it's pretty cool to recruit them nonetheless. Now, before we leave, I do want to try recruiting it again just to get this piece of dialogue. So Sabin says, what is it? And let's say, sure. Sabin says, but the greater our number, the slower we can move. Forget it. And yeah, that's an excuse because we are full up on party members. But uh, I guess maybe having five would slow us down a little bit. Although how much is an open question because it is after all a ghost. Now, as you're noticing right now, there are random encounters out here, but none of them are particularly dangerous. I'm not exactly sure why they would include bombs out here and not just more ghostly enemies, but it's gonna be fine. Now these ghosts all kind of have individual personalities a little bit and do different things. Let's try talking to this one. And it says, look out! And that's right, we're gonna fight it. And I feel a little bad about this because this train is taking people who have recently died to the afterworld and we're like, I don't know, killing their ghost? The ghost disappears after you defeat it in combat, so I don't know if we're just sending them to hell or what's going on. But I'm gonna try not to do too many of these because it just makes me feel bad. However, in this first card, we're gonna talk to all of them because, once again, they each do... There are three different things that they can do. 
and I definitely want to show all of those. But beyond that, all of the cars that are kind of filled with ghosts are the same, so we'll just do it this time. This one says, Howdy folks, I have some great value price items, and it is an item shop. And we don't really need very much, but I am just going to go ahead and stock back up to 99 shurikens because I've been really enjoying chucking these around. And they're very, very cheap, so why not? Everything else we should be pretty good on. And it's another uh, attacker. The other thing that makes me feel even worse about this is that this seems to be like the lower class area of the train where uh, back here is just kind of open cars, lots of people milling around. But you'll see when we get to the front of the train, it seems to have more of a uh, classy, wealthy vibe. So not only are we murdering people's <laughs> spirits, but we're also murdering poor people's spirits, I think. <laughs> So I'm going to try to avoid that from now on. Other than this one right here. These all got to die. <laughs> and one dispatch will take it out. Okay. I think now is time to move on. There is one more, and this one's going to want to join. We've already met one like this. So let's just say no here and keep on going. Oh, I actually think this is a new encounter, and this will give me a chance to mention the ghost skill when his turn comes up. That is Possess. Possess will be an instant kill on a monster, but you will lose your ghost friend, and I don't want to lose my ghost friend, so we're pretty much not going to use it, although I will show you a very convenient place to do so. And unfortunately, the ghost is pretty worthless outside of Possess. He just has a physical attack and Possess. And his physical attack is nothing to write home about. But before we continue, I almost forgot to show you this here. Which will drop us back into the ghost-filled car. <laughs> Quite heavily, I might add. Which will probably end up getting us in another random encounter, but something I forgot to mention before now... Oh, still goings are new is that now that we're on board the Phantom Train, Shadow no longer has the possibility of leaving. For, at the very least, this part of the scenario. So we managed to get very... I guess very is the wrong word. We managed to get lucky, but not hitting on a 1 in 16 chances. I don't know, not super lucky. It's pretty much just normal. And I think it's about time for a top-up, so why don't we go ahead and do that? Maybe we should have bought a few tonics, but we have, like, plenty of healing items, so I'm not super worried about it. That looks good. Let's keep going. And it's another ghost-filled car, but you'll notice a ghost blocking the exit. And if we walk all the way to this side, uh, we can't continue. So... Once again, I could talk to the ghosts, but they all kind of do the same things. They either fight, have an item shop, or want to join you. So let's talk to this one. No escape. And we end up in a fight. And the way that uh, the ghost kind of blocks the door reminds me a little bit of the Shade Abbey scene in uh, Shining Forest, where the villagers start blocking your exit. It's really, really creepy and really well done in that game, and I enjoy it just as much in this game. If not more, because this is unequivocally a better game. But still, they're both very cool scenes. Ha ha ha. Whatever did you think you were doing? No escape. Huh? No escape. Who's there? It came from this direction. Oh boy, they are surrounding us. Whoa, they're coming. This way too. You 
can't escape, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. However, there is somewhere to run, which is going to be right up here. You can't escape, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Bloody persistent. This fight's a little bit inconvenient, but I'm going to leave it in because I don't think we've met Whispers yet. But even if we have, I want to talk about them a little bit. You'll notice that they take like a little bit of damage every few seconds, and that's because they're under the seizure status, which is an interesting status ailment because it works like poison, but is not quite poison. It can be cured by everything that cures poison, except for the antidote item. But the antidote spell does cure it. Why is it in the game? I don't know, but there you go. <laughs> Anyway, let's run over here. Science says I believe we're stuck. Savin says, I know. Science says, you have an idea? Okay. The time has come to see if all my training has paid off. Come, Cyan. And we are going to take a flying leap. Yahoo! <laughs> but this last one doesn't quite work out. But that's okay, we seem to have escaped for now. And uh, to our right, we can't go anywhere, so let's go left. No escape. Hey. Uh-oh. And yep, they're still following us. And I love our ghosts. <laughs> Surprise sprite, it's amazing. Bloody persistent, we say again. We have to detach the rear train cars. And so we're going to do exactly that by flipping this switch here. And there it goes. We managed to escape those creepy, creepy ghosts. Can't follow us now. And if we go back inside and pull the switch again, it's going to open the way forward. And there is obviously a save point there, but we're not going to need it right now. However, there is an encounter in here that I do want to get, and that would be this one right here, the Overmind. This is the only place you can meet them in the game, and they are nothing special, but they do look really, really cool, so they have that going for them. <laughs> and as I've mentioned previously, I'll explain why we're doing these uh, one-of-a-kind encounters a little bit later. In fact, uh, sooner than later. the dining car. Here we go. Let's sit in the chair. Savin says, food, food, bring me everything you got. <laughs> Not the most polite restaurant customer. But the ghost waiter comes hurrying right over and brings food just like he asked for. Savin says, uh, are you going to be okay if you eat this? Savin laughs, worried, can't wage war on an empty stomach. Savin says, hmm. Sir, I won't hear any more of this kind of talk. Gobble, snarf, snap. <laughs> the sound of an absolute crazy person eating. HP and MP recovered and status ailments like poison cured. Thanks, game. <laughs> Now the ghost comes and clears the food away. Savin says, well, I've stuffed down all I can. Let's go. And we are going to go, but there are a couple of extra little scenes here if you sit back down with different characters in front. We're going to skip Cyan because he says the same thing that he says to Savin right there, so I don't feel like we need to do that separately. But let's go ahead and put Shadow in the front and take a look at that one. Waiter asks, care for something? And I'm gonna say yes, please. Much, much more polite than just screaming, food, food, bring me food. <laughs> One moment, please. And it's Interceptor. Shadow says, Interceptor, are you hungry? 
And he's a very good boy. Of course he's hungry. <laughs> so he gives Interceptor a little bit of ghost food, and that is the entire reason I'm doing this. <laughs> is pretty much just to make sure that Interceptor gets a snack. And then the last one I want to do is going to be having the ghost in the front. Now that we fed the dog, we can uh, have a little fun. So let's go ahead and do that. And when they bring the food out, <laughs> the ghost is going to do this happy dance. And the first time I did this, I didn't realize that you actually have to press a button to move on. I figured he would stop and eat at some point, but no, he'll just do this for as long as you let him. <laughs> All right, that's enough of that. I do like that they all make the same disgusting eating sounds. That is nice. Even the ghost. But I do believe we've uh, played around in the dining room car for quite long enough, so let's get our party back the way it was. That looks good. All right. And if we head left, they're going to say, please order at the table. Don't order from us at our server station over here. But we do notice the treasure box over by them, and we want to grab that. So let's go ahead and head around to the other side. And we are going to find earrings, which is really, really sweet. It might seem like we don't have a use for that, but Aurable is magic damage. So I'm going to go ahead and put these on. And now our Aurobolt is going to be, like, super ridiculous. It's already ridiculous, and it's going to be... Even better. We're going to be dealing like around a thousand damage now, which is unreal for this point in the game. But let's keep on going. We're going to find another ghost car. And in here, if we try to open this treasure box, a voice cries out, stop where you are. And the man says, I am Siegfried, the world's greatest swordsman. That treasure chest is mine. And I want you to notice the spelling of the name here. It starts with a Z. If I were you, Ox, I'd grab Grandpa here and run. Sabin laughs. You look more like a manicurist. Now scram! Siegfried says, Aha! The Ox bellows. Allow me to introduce my blade. And now in combat here, his name is spelled with an S. And he says, Go, guys! Ha ha ha! Give up? Um, no, we don't. And despite the uh, boss music here, uh, he is not really a boss. He's more of a joke. Now, Secret's name ends up being spelled three different ways through the course of the game, which led to a bunch of wild fan theories. Ha ha ha, give up? Still no. Uh, we're not going to possess him. We'll just hit him with a dispatch. One hit is just going to drop him instantly. Now, the fact that there are three spellings is probably... One of them's probably a typo. But there being two different spellings, it does actually have a meaning. But we'll talk about that later, because he's already dead. <laughs> what a bag of wind. Secret says, impossible. I, I'm the greatest, but I'll still laugh last. Wahaha, <laughs> this treasure is mine. Ta-ta, queens. <laughs> and if he reminds you a little bit of Ultros, he's kind of supposed to. He's just a little bit of a recurring antagonist, but nothing too serious. And now we have another room with invisible treasure boxes. One is right here. Uh, that's going to be a tent. And then there is one on this tile next to it. But unfortunately, you can never face it. So you can't open it because it's only one tile away from the walls on all sides. Uh, what would be inside it would be a fairy ring, which is a relic that would protect against dark and poison. Uh, but we can never grab it. So let's move on. <laughs> now, interestingly, this room is exactly the same as the last room we were in, right down to the invisible treasures. If you didn't get it in the last room, you can actually get it here. But since we got it, it's gone. 
but I feel like that kind of speaks to this being just some kind of coding error, and definitely not on purpose. It's very, very strange. Anyway, there's the impresario again. Let's talk to him. Want to stop the train? Just use the controls in the engineer's compartment. Once again, he is kind of cheerily helpful, which is very strange. Now, if this ghost would kindly get out of my way, we have one more room to explore, and that is this one here with all these treasure boxes. We're going to go ahead and open them first, uh, heading to the right. So we get a phoenix down, a sniper sight, which is a relic that allows your fight commands to never miss. It's not super useful, but situationally it can be very good. There are some very high evade enemies in the game that you might want to use this for. And another phoenix down. Let's go ahead and open this one. It's a monster in a box. And this is the Spectre, who will appear here and never again. He's actually pretty tough, as you can tell by that ice attack there. But we're going to go ahead and throw our Possess at him, and hope that it works. That did not work, so we're going to have to try again. <laughs> so the Spectre is 1500 HP and can be pretty dangerous. Um, if Possess had decided to work there, we could have taken him out in the first round, but we're going to go ahead and use Possess once. Um, because the Ghost is not going to stay in the party for very much longer. Come on, Ghost friend. Please. <laughs> I am just burning through potions here, Ghosty. We need you. This is unbelievable. <laughs> I'm just going to have everyone use a tonic on themselves, I guess. But as you can tell by from what's happening, you're better off just killing this thing normally. Like, I could have done it in two rounds of combat. I just really want to show Possess once. And this is arguably the most useful point in the game where you could use it. What is happening right now? Let's have Cyan use a potion on himself. Is this real life? I'm not even really sure what to say. <laughs> I know this works. I've done it before. I am so confused. Why is this happening? Um, yeah, I guess we're just gonna keep trying. There we go. Wow. <laughs> wow, and it got a counterattack anyway. Awesome. <laughs> but for our trouble, we get a hyper wrist, which is very nice. We are uh, quickly gaining party members and don't necessarily have enough relics to go around. I am just uh, a little speechless right now. <laughs> but now that we've topped up, um, I don't really... I could like switch up the sprint shoes, but I still want to be moving fast. And I don't really have a great use for a Hyper Wrist. They don't stack or anything, so I think we're just going to leave our relics the way they are. So now that we've used Possess, I do actually want to have a ghost with us for the next part to see the cutscene that happens if you still have one with you in your party. And we actually got a little bit beat up there, so why don't we go ahead and heal up a little bit. But in order to recruit that ghost, it's not that far. We're just gonna have to uh, run straight to the right to this next car, right over here, and talk to the very first ghost in here. He's gonna join us. We'll bring that one along for sure, just so we can check out this cutscene, and then head right back to where we were. Shall we be off? And there he goes. He will not accompany us to stop the actual Phantom Train. I guess we're on our own now. And in here, there is just a save point, but we're not going to need it. Let's keep going. We finally made it to the front of the train. 
And check out the kind of ghostly face on the door. I just love that. This is the engineer's room. Gotta stop this thing. Now, you just have to guess at this. There's no way to actually know there's no clue or anything, but I know what it is. It's the first and the third one. If you get it wrong, you just end up having to come back and guess again, but we're not going to waste time. Let's just get right to it. Press the switch and the train will stop. That ends up not exactly being true, though. <laughs> the phantom train says, so, you've been slowing my progress. And now, this is one of my favorite boss fights in the entire game. The fact that it's a back attack, you're running along the tracks like this, and just the train's overall design is just amazing. And we're about to engage in one of the most iconic moments in gaming history right now. Check this out. <laughs> Suplex a train! It's amazing! Now, the Phantom Train has 1900 HP, but that's not gonna matter because we're gonna one-shot it with a Phoenix down right now. <laughs> I don't really like cheesy fights like this, but I think this is worth showing, so we're just gonna do it. Boom, it's already dead. <laughs> Still, the overall design of this fight is just incredible, and I love it so much. And for our trouble suplexing that train, we get one tent. Neat. The Phantom Train says, I will let you go, but first there is something I must do. Cyan gulps. Where are we? Sabin says, Who boy, finally got off. We shouldn't be here. Let's go now. And if we look among the people boarding, we can see a couple familiar faces. Cyan says, no! Elaine! Elaine! Sabin says, Cyan, is that your wife and child? Departing? Please, wait! Elaine! Owain! My love, you made me so happy. Don't forget me. And his child says, Dad, I'll make sure Mom's all right. And let's go ahead and cure Sabin's poison to not kind of ruin the mood of this scene. But I really love the way this scene is handled. Shadow says, leave him alone. But let's go try to talk to him anyway. But he has nothing to say. And that would just be so unimaginably painful. Oh, wow. And I love the way that... Cyan is just silent. He has nothing to say about it, and it's like he lost his wife and child for a second time watching them go right in front of them, even though they got to say some final last words to him. But we still have more adventuring to do. We're still on our way to Narsh. The Phantom Forest is done, and we're going to keep on going, but that's going to have to wait until next time because I'm all out of time for today. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next Final Fantasy Friday.